kind of um, cringe-y at the idea of an architect. And uh, because we didn't want like one person or one group of people dictating architecture to all the devs and that kind of thing. It just, it doesn't work well with the people we hire are probably all individually capable of being that architect. But what was definitely becoming apparent was that um, communicating across vertical, because these are huge teams, um, was just not happening enough. There were cases where the JSON stuff that we work with would put something in a new place, some important piece of information would go somewhere and, you know, all the way over here on the EHR side, we didn't know it was there, uh, we didn't know to pick it up from there and that kind of thing, it was just like, you know, we've got hand and foot and whatever, just not talking enough. So <clears throat> part of this core team is definitely going to be working out those kind of issues and trying to build architectures that make those interfaces a lot more clear. And um, that's kind of what it spawned from. It, I don't think it came from like a, a place of like, our people don't know what we're doing. It's just that, you know, there's a hundred people and you can't talk to them all. Right. So I think it came from that. Does that answer your question? All right. I was going to say too, the performance side of things is probably, I mean, we're definitely growing and we have a lot of users, um, but we don't, I don't, I don't think concurrency is our biggest problem. It's, it's a problem in some places, but our problem is way more about the complexity of what we do and like being able to decipher what we're actually doing. Uh, yeah, what's up? Um, and you guys, you know, you have your four basic verticals. I, I was curious, um, your experience, others on documenting those APIs. You know, how are how are those uh, discovered and, yeah. and communicated? Well, we do have our REST APIs are documented because we actually dog food them. They're they're a lot of them are meant to be used by clients too, so we document them as if you didn't have access to the code. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, obviously, like, you know, GitHub readme's are good for how do I install this, what does it do, overview. Um, but we need to do a better job, I think. It's definitely not perfect. Uh, there are apps that I just have no idea what they do. I mean, I haven't had to work with them, but I'm always, something new will come across, and what does that do? <laughs> you look at the readme, and it's, it's not very helpful. Um, I don't know. I think REST APIs we do a pretty good job of because those are kind of easy to. Here's the request schema. Here's what you'll get back. Here's how to authenticate. That kind of thing. But I think where it gets maybe more difficult is like uh, the behavior that comes with that. So you've got this resource that you can create PAs with, but what does that do? You know, does that does that go to the plan? You know, when does it go to the plan? You know, what's going on behind the scenes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, we just kind of learn that as we go, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just common problem. Just, just Yeah, it's not easy. Just wondering. Certainly not easy. But expressive code helps a lot, that's for sure. If I can read your code and see what the code actually does, that's kind of a source of truth for sure, but you don't want to have to recode all the time. And like I said, clients don't have that luxury. So. Right. So, do you find that there's any challenge in optimizing the simplicity or expressivity of code because I like I have the impression that different people will be able to um, deal with a different density of information. Absolutely. So is, how, yeah. how is that dealt with? More people looking at it. So okay. yeah, the pairing helps a lot. Um, you know, I've been on this one product forever, and so each time we get a new person, I'm like, tell me everything you think sucks, because I'm starting to look at this thing like the guy from The Matrix that knows exactly what's yeah. going on, right? So that helps a lot. Code reviews help. Um, switching teams helps, because, you know, I'm going to go to another team. That means the other guys, they've got to pick up and learn what's going on in there, and hopefully in the process, clean it up. Is I mean, do you personally feel that it's only upwardly moving optimization, or is there any sort of lower, lowest common denominator factor working into that? Mm -hmm. like, you know, the code actually has to get worse for more people to, for the amount of people that need to understand it to understand it. So, by worse, 
do you kind of mean like, oh, this isn't as elegantly solved, but will make sense to everyone on the team more? Possibly, yeah, okay. because like I was talking about density, like you might be able to express something in um, like less room, yep. it would require less reading, yep. but a newer person might need that split up into multiple parts in order to get the same information. I have a great example. I think that there's people on our team that know Ruby inside and out and have such an understanding that they can make the most concise code that, like using maybe that tap thing. I, I kind of like tap, but there's there's things in Ruby, the collection uh, API just has an insane number of things that you can do that you don't normally get. And you know where I might write some code that's a little bit more sequential, they're just like, oh yeah, dot, whatever does that for you. And so then somebody who doesn't know that exists looks at it and doesn't make as much sense. So I think that, yeah, I, mean, I think you're right, but that's just something you gotta work through because like if, if I were pairing with that person, I might try to argue that I don't understand the way they did it, but they would argue back, well, if you know Ruby. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that argument, if, if you know it, yeah. then that argument wins? I don't know what wins. <laughs> <Okay. about. laughs> I think that's up to um, yeah. people to maybe get a tiebreaker. If if we're really, I've never had a situation where I've butted heads too much okay. with the person I'm pairing with. Um, so I think, but if I were, you can get. I have before gotten a third opinion on it, and sometimes they have a new way to do it. And it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I've been thinking about Elixir and stuff too. Like when I look at that, I don't know Elixir at all, and like some of the stuff that the way you solve problems with it looks so concise and, well, I, and good. But like I don't apply the you want to apply the three AM principle. Like if you get caught at three AM and you know some prep system's down, are you going to be able to wake up and look at this and understand what's yeah. going on here? Are you still recording? So. Oh yeah, yeah. Q and oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think I was going to say something. Can you stop the recording? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>